It's the country's number one RVing radio show, sponsored by RVTravel.com, with your host, Alan Warren, the RV wingman. All right, the only show to tell you the good, the uh, sometimes not so good, and the occasional downright ugly parts of RVing in the RV lifestyle. I am Alan Warren, the RV wingman, and welcome to the RV Show USA. This is the After the Show show, where you can only catch it on social media and by way of our podcasts. To make certain that you never miss a one, subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn those notifications on. Now, there's a reason that we are the most listened to, most talked about show on the, about the RV lifestyle in the whole country. One of those reasons is that we do our best to educate the RVer and the wannabe RVer and give a true and accurate picture of what RVing is really like. Now, while you'll hear the occasional horror story, the good parts of RVing far outweigh the bad. It's just that we give you all sides of what the lifestyle is like. Our topic for today's After the Show show is slide outs. And to get us started, we got Mr. Cannon Combs on the line with us from RV Station. Welcome there, Big Daddy. How you doing, big man? I'm doing great. Now, uh, Cannon, for any first-timers who are catching the show, can you give them a little background, kind of the the 60-second version, if you will, of RV Station and the place that RV Station has in in the in the dealer market in Texas, I guess? Well, we're kind of a, what we like to call a boutique, maybe like your mom and pop dealer. You know, we, we don't, you know, we kind of, we get a lot more personable with our customers than some of the big city dealers just because we don't sell as many. So, you know, we're, we're, uh, you know, we're kind of out in, in, in the B markets and the C markets, I got a couple stores in A markets, and we're we're creeping into another A market because we're finding there's kind of a demand for people like us. Um, customers are seeking out service, but we're just kind of the boutique mom and pop. We're not the biggest, um, but I do believe personally that we're the friendliest and we offer the best service. Well, we're I keep I, doing it. I concur, and I want everybody that that is listening, everybody watching right now, to know that this is not a commercial for RV Station. It is not. This is about education, but I wanted you to know who who the guy is on the other end of the line with me in case you didn't know. This is all about education, and um, I guess it's really canon part of what y'all started several months ago. that We're doing this little experiment, this online version of what you do every single month at your Texas stores. Yes, we, we just we think it's very, very important to offer an education for our viewers or for wannabe RVers. I mean, it's very time-consuming, um, but as the bigger picture moves along and more and more people are buying RVs as the numbers are going up, we felt like, you know, someone needed to just kind of stand up and, and be kind of, I don't know if I would say ambassador, but look, there, there's a lot of great dealers out there. But the more we educate people, and the, the more we educate our customers, um, the more awareness people are going to have and the happier they're going to be. You know, everybody wants to be a happy camper. You know, the more you know about your RV, uh, the happier you're going to be. If something goes wrong and, you know, you, you may not have expected it, but we, we kind of go through, you know, how to how to be prepared if something does go wrong or, or you know, kind of take you down the lines of what to do in certain situations. But we feel like education is so important, and I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. I, I think over the next few years you're going to just see more and more and more people digging into this with us. I, I tend to agree with you, and i, and I got to tell you that owning a campground, we see people all the time that, you know, they, they spend all this money on an RV, and they're so – I call it intoxicated when they buy their RV. When they do the walkthrough, they don't remember half the stuff. And when they they get to the campground, they're literally they're just clueless. And and they really they, go I mean, ahead. I mean, I'm not. And it's not that they're stupid. There's a lot of stuff. It, none of it's hard, but there's just a lot of components, and it does take time. And I, it's so refreshing to know that there's a place that I can go, that I, there's no stupid questions that you can ask. Um, and, and you guys will answer them. So I, I just think that's awesome. So, so okay, so here's the deal, folks. Cannon and I talked the other day, and he's like, you know what? Um, if, if you want, there's because he gets calls. I get emails a lot from people that are outside of uh, Texas that want these educational classes. So Cannon calls, you know, can we try to do an online version? Do you mind? So I'm like, well, I'm, I'm cool with that. So I think this is a great idea, Cannon. I appreciate you coming on with us. 
No, I, it's, it's not a big deal, man. The more awareness we get, I mean, we want people to come out, you know, so the more people hear about it, the more they're coming out. What we're finding is that people are having a lot of fun and they're learning about RDs. And listen, I mean, I'm still asking questions about RDs. <laughs> They've come so far technologically that, you know, and I'm learning stuff in them and yeah. I've been telling them pretty much my whole life. So, so that we're making it fun. You know, it's not just education. I wouldn't even call it kind of education. I like calling it education because you're getting it. But it's it's a lot of banter between your other, you know, the other campers, the other people that are there. But it's, it's uh, you know, that's the big thing is we're trying to get more awareness out, and I think this is great. So so I'm just curious, in terms of people that buy a new RV, how many of them, how many of these RVs have slide outs? Half of them? Less than half? Do most people want no, slides? The, we're getting into the majority now in the high, high percentages uh, are, are have slide outs. You know, you have some entry levels that don't offer slides, but the slide technology has come so far again. You know, I keep beating the, the uh, dead horse with technology, but it's just unbelievable what these OEs are giving us now. I mean, it used to be if you had a leak, it was always the slide out. Now it's rarely the slide out. So the majority of RVs we sell, whether it be, Travel trailer, fifth wheel, toy box, even motorhomes, especially motorhomes, they all have slides. There are some 26, 27 footers that people are buying and they want to really keep it down and dirty um, in a lower price point that don't have them. Mm -hmm. But we're finding out that most people that buy them without them and, you know, come back in three or four months and they want more room. Yeah. You know, our our RV and his, I mean, the slides have made them so much more so much more roomy on the inside and it makes it so much more fun yeah. so that's what we try to do we really try to educate the buyer you know to B- buy before the before right they the first yeah before they spend the money and then come back in three months exactly. and yeah so all right folks here's yeah. what we're going to do we've got three of rv station's finest uh, uh rv techs and each one of them is going to kind of talk with us a little bit about a different kind of a slide out uh, so if you have a question about, you know, your slide out, you want to make a comment, feel free to post it down here, and we will try to get it to one of our techs. So on line three, we've got, uh, we've got Lewis from over in Nacogdoches. So, Lewis, I understand you got just a, a little bit of experience with slide outs and slide out issues. Tell me about it. Yeah, well, I think a lot of things on – sometimes people get a little bit of a misconception. You know, people are told to uh, grease their moving components. And uh, I've seen people actually like put bearing grease on their side components. You don't really want to grease your side components. You want to lube them. Like, for instance, on a uh, maybe on a cable slide, you've got a couple of components. You've got cables. you got chains. you got gears. You don't really want to grease any of that. Uh, what I like to use maybe is some kind of uh, water deterrent, WD-40. Uh, lithium grease is good. Lithium grease kind of creates a protective uh, coating around uh, your components. It's kind of one of those things, too, you want to do. You know, they, they suggest doing them three or four times a year. But, you know, if you're the avid camper and you're using the thing, you know, three or four times a month or you're living in it, you know, you obviously want to do it more. You want to keep up keep more frequently, things like that. But In, in terms of slide outs, so the, the, the cable slides, uh, percentage-wise, are they the majority of the slides that you're seeing or, or not? And what do I need to know about them specifically? I wouldn't say majority. I, um, you see them a lot of times on your fifth wheel, uh, mainly on your fifth wheel. They uh, not really a whole lot. A lot of people think that you know there's a lot to the upkeep. It's so simple; anybody can do it. Um, if you look inside above your slide, you'll see you have like chain links, kind of like you see on a bicycle, and you have two little gears up top. Those you 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 know you kind of want to uh, want to keep those lubricated because those are moving every time you bring those in and out. Um, they sell, I can't think the name of it off the top of my head, but it's pretty much 70, 40. You want to keep those lived up. And then as far as it goes from the actual cable component on the side, you don't really want to put 70, 40 on that because those, um, that's kind of uh, on the exterior of the trailer. And a lot of times what you'll see is dirt sticks to 70, 40 a lot. So like I mentioned, uh, lithium grease is real good. Uh, just kind of get your wet rag and kind of just wipe your cables down. You don't want to get too heavy on it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of one of the things you wipe on there and leave it at that. Really simple. You know, save you a lot of heartache. And uh, what are the biggest? What, what's the biggest uh, reason why people 
uh, bring their RVs to you that have a slide out issue? Is it because the slide out stops working because it was poorly uh, designed, or is it because of yeah. operator error, no, 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 no. maintenance, lack of maintenance? Uh, 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 yeah, a lot of it is just kind of like a like a lack of maintenance thing. You know, when you're out having a good time with your family and you're out the beach, you know, last thing you're thinking about is is upkeep on your on your slide out. So a lot of it's just no, they just don't know what to do. I've, we've got several people on online. Rainy wants to know. He says he's got four slides. Wow, four slides, and sometimes they go out very slowly. They come and go in and out very slowly. What's happening? Well, that could be a number of things. It could be a voltage issue. Um, it could be a lot. Some of it is, uh, you know, some of those things have, some of those slides are massive. You know, some of them have, like, refrigerators, love seats, so because that's a lot of weight. And, you know, especially you see on your hydraulic or your electric slides, uh, you've got basically gears. You've got a gearbox and an arm that track on it, tracks on it. And, you know, if that's one of those things that's left unlubricated and it basically kind of rusts up and it's, you create friction. You got all the weight on it. You got the rust, the dirt, the grime, and that just kind of it, it just adds more friction to the process and kind of makes it slower coming in and coming out. Sometimes it'll make like a nasty noise. It'll sound a lot worse than it is. So that's just something that can be avoided with you know regular regular maintenance three or four times a year. Well, if if I get a slide that's stuck out, are there any uh, hacks, any ways that I can get it back in? Uh, you know, instead of I mean, calling the doctor to yeah, come out and fix it? Or? Yeah, that's kind of just depending on the slide. You know, sometimes on the cable slides, they do have a, uh, you know, they have a motor up top. They have a little spot that's going to be on the end of the motor that fits a uh, number three square drive. And a lot of these campers that we sell at RV stations, they come with this tool. It comes with a little, it's a, probably a, maybe a little over a foot long, comes with a number three square drive. You chalk it up in your drill just like you would any kind of bit, and you can run that in and out if that motor, you know, if, Assuming that the motor is bad, and then a lot of times the uh, the hydraulic ones will have a manual override up at the pump, and then somewhere on your electric ones they have actually like a uh, manual crank that you, that you'll see down at the bottom of the slide room on the exterior of the trailer. Okay, so so I'm gonna we're gonna kind of wrap this up. What is the if you had to give me I got a slide out on my RV, and it did, any of the any of the three types of slides. What are the one or two things that you want me to remember, Lewis? What are the things, the most important things for me to remember if I got slide outs? You got slide outs, I would always remember uh, a lot of times, you know, we kept in the fall, we got a lot of debris, wind, uh, especially down here in Texas, you got a lot of pine straw. You always want to, before you bring those in, you want to always remember to check the top of there. Sometimes you get a broom. I think people have air, you know, like uh, air compressors they blow them off with. That's one thing you always want to remember. And, uh, Bringing them in dry helps a lot too. You do have wiper seals that's designed to wipe the water away, mm-hmm. you know. But some, you know, not not everything always works one hundred percent. So you always want to remember to try, try if you can. Bring your rooms in dry and make sure that your your roof. If you don't have slide toppers, you want to make sure your roof's clean. And, and if you do have to bring your slide in wet when you get home or to wherever you're storing it, it's a good idea to, to stick them back out, let them dry out, and then bring it. If you're especially if you're going to store it over a long period of time, right? Oh, oh, most definitely. Because so you got to think, you know, if you got those things closed up, you got the water in there. It's just you know, you know water. You, you, Water's not you good. Know. Not good. Yes. All right, listen, all. Uh, we're, we're, we're going to jump it here in a second, but uh, Cannon's on the other line. You want to say hi to him? What's up, Cannon? I heard you're coming in tomorrow. I'm coming in tomorrow. Be there tomorrow I'm afternoon, but I can't wait to see you. Uh, maybe right, you can teach me more about slides. I mean, I, I knew you were smart in our slide tech guy, but holy mackerel. <laughs> you really hey, awesome. I, I, hey, I owe <laughs> it all awesome. to Eric, man. Hey, he's, he's taught me everything I know from when I started five years ago. That's the guy that knows it all. All right. Well, hey, hey, Lewis, are you enjoying these classes? These people that come out and they're uh, are they? Yeah, you know, it's a small town, and a lot of times I, I've, I've known so many people from since before I started working there. So it's always fun to interact with our customers, and and they're enjoying know, it. I hear. No, yeah. A lot of times, you know, you, you might hear, uh, you know, you might always hear the bad things that you do that that, that you might mess up and make mistakes. But it's good to have people come in and enjoy your company and That's be able nice. to. Uh, you know, relay the message. All right. Listen, thank you so much. You take care. We'll talk again, Lewis. Yes, sir. You have a good one. All right. Again, folks, we're talking about slide outs and the different kinds of slides 
that are out there, how to take care of. Cannon, what are, you, what are your thoughts <laughs> with some of the things that Lewis was saying? Dude, he's just awesome. He's smart. You know, our our, our big, you know, certified techs like Lewis are, are, you know, they're just so well educated. You know, they've been up to the factories. They know how these things work in and out. And there's nothing my boys can't fix and fix well. So, and Lewis is one of the top dogs. We've, we've just got such a great team over there. I love it. All right, listen, we're get, let's awesome. go over to Tyler, Texas, and bring up David Reed from RV Station in Tyler. How's it going there, David? Going fine, man. How are you doing? We're doing good. So, uh, did you hear any of Lewis's phone call about slides? Yeah, I did. He was talking about uh, how to manually override a Norco and a hydraulic slide with the uh, with the flexible tool they give you. Tell tell me about uh, my notes. Say that that you you know a lot uh, about uh, the old conventional slides. Can you kind of describe them and how they differ from maybe cable slides or the the Schwintex? Yeah, well, with with cable slides and Swintex, you have nothing underneath the room, which is why a lot of manufacturers will mix the rooms. But in in an application where a manufacturer is trying to mount a room like in the a bedroom of a fifth wheel, you know, you, there's not as much room there to have tubes underneath it hanging down there. The conventional slides that you'll see, and they can either be driven hydraulically or electrically with an actuator, you're going to see two large rectangular black tubes underneath it. And if you get under there and stare into there, which you should to lubricate some of this stuff, there's going to be some gear paths welded underneath these tubes. And uh, it's run with a rack and pinion system with two gear packs underneath it. And the rack and pinion part kind of keeps the slide out in time as it goes in and out the hole. Okay, David, i got to ask you something. I mean, you're – What's that? uh, All right. I just think that there are a lot of people – maybe I'm wrong, but there's a lot of people that have slides – that have no idea about what you just said. They have no idea oh, what. My con- bad. <laughs> my bad. No, 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 no. I'm, this is not uh, on you. I'm just saying the reality is, you know, you, there's different kinds of slides. Isn't it true that most most RVers, I mean, unless you really dig into it, they don't know what kind they have. They just know that that they want it to work. Yes. No. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I mean, but basically, you know, the the most common slide that you see over the over the years especially if it's the lower rooms, if you see the large uh, tubes underneath it, those are the conventional style. And just, just knowing your basic preventative maintenance is going to keep you from having to be an expert at it. How? Knowing where to, where to lube them and how to take care of the, uh, the wipe seals and the bulb seals on them. How do people learn that? I mean, without coming to, literally, without coming to an RV station, RV class, how do people... Well, you know, it, yeah, it's funny you say that. I was actually spending the last... Uh, 45 minutes because I knew you were calling, just kind of brushing up on YouTube. Uh, if you if you know some key words like Norco slide outs, LCI slide outs, or just just slide out, you can go on there and actually find manufacturer videos. I was watching one by Highland Ridge on Norco slide outs, and it was really informative. So I tell people all the time that come up to the shop and come to classes. I said, you know. I may not get everything perfectly right, but if you'll go on YouTube, man, you can see it in action. You know, I'm sitting here explaining it, but, uh, you know, YouTube's a powerful tool these days. It, it is, but I want to jump in here. There, the problem with the good thing about YouTube is that there's all that information out there. The bad thing about YouTube is there's so much information out there. It's hard to differentiate between the right information and stuff that sounds right, but it could be very wrong. LCI or Norco or whoever makes these products, that's the videos you need to watch. I mean, in my yes, yes, sir, correct. You'll be able to tell if you do so. A little, you know, a little bit of research, like. The one I was watching was actually a guy that went to a, a it was an LC, LCI guy, or a guy from Norco slide out that went to and gave a class at an RV shop. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're just seeing the, an obvious individual owner uh, giving his experiences, it can be useful, but it may not be exactly correct. You know. Okay. What are your thoughts you know, on, on uh, uh, slide toppers? You know, I, I hear pros and cons. What are your thoughts, David? I think they're more pro than con. Uh, it keeps you from having to get up there on a ladder, sweep them off every time. And like uh, Lewis was talking about, that's one of the big things that can cause debris to get into the slide-out mechanisms, especially with the, the track style, which, which the tracks on the side of the swim and the cable style. Uh, but 
it keeps debris on off of there. It helps with water leaks if you're not perfectly level or, or your seals haven't flapped out. The only really downside that I hear is uh, with wind, they can bellow. I don't hear that as much, but mainly when you have a really good rain, it tends to fill up with water and pool on the top of them. Mm. You just have to remember after that happens, maybe cycle your slide out and get that off of there. I got you. I didn't even think of that. But that's a, that's a, a good suggestion. What about we had somebody earlier that that uh, posted in our uh, live stream about the their slides. They have four slides in their RV, and they come in and out sometimes very very slowly. And talk to me about the importance of having uh, fully charged batteries. Oh, in the RV world, batteries are everything. Uh, you know, most if not. Even the only appliance that I can think of that doesn't run off 12 volts, even if it uses 110 volts, which battery versus house power, is the microwave. Everything else, the refrigerator, the, you know, the air conditioner, the slide-out systems, the lights, everything runs off the battery. It's the heart of the RV. So, yeah, battery, battery maintenance is huge with anything in an RV. So if somebody uh, has had their RV in the in the storage lot for six months they pick it up and they, they take it to the campground for the first time for the year and they're complaining because their slides aren't working it's probably because their batteries are weak or dead it could be it could be especially if they're not plugged in the shoreline you know uh, it's especially uh, i hear it all the time they go out to the to where they store it and they want to start opening it up and if they're not plugged in with the battery charger running or you know or your truck's not supplying it with voltage the, the battery definitely could be low and uh, low voltage causes lots of problems. All right, this is this is good info. I want to kind of switch gears just a little bit and ask you something okay. as a as a service manager. What is it like? And and tell me the truth. What is it like with the occasional customer when they get upset? I mean, what have you learned as a service manager? How do you handle the upset customer when you get one? I know you don't want any, but what what do well, you do? The first thing I do is <clears throat> I try to understand where he's coming from, because if I I've reversed the role in my mind for just a split second and say, you know, if I just, you know, spent this kind of investment, how would I feel? And I use that as a tool to not let my emotions get the best of me and just explain, honestly communicate with him and explain what's going on and, and let him know the boundaries of what I can and can't do and let it go from there. And you, you said the word communicating, and I, I think yeah. that – go ahead. No, no, I was just saying, I was agreeing. I mean, you know, it's effective communication. A lot of people, they can communicate when they, they, they think they're, that the other person's understanding them. But what you said to me is, is very, um, uh, very significant. When you listen to what the other person's problem is, it's not just a problem, but you can tell what's in their voice, their frustration. You can tell, and I think the, the way you handle things, and that's one of the deals I read your reviews you know, from RV station and, and it's oh, the, the way y'all handle situations because it's not always perfect, but it's the way you handle them that, that kind of makes you the boutique shop that y'all are. So, well, thank you. Anyway, Hey, I, I don't want to put you on the spot. And by the way, Cannon is on the phone, but I know that you used to work for one of the big mega dealers. We will not mention their name, but what's the atmosphere like working for, for, uh, I don't want to say a little guy cause RV station is not a little guy, but working for somebody different, uh, a smaller owned RV dealership like RV Station compared uh, to the big boys. I give RV, I'd give RV Station a five star all day long. Uh, they treat their employees like they treat their customers. They care about them, uh, and that translates through. You know, a happy employee equals a happy customer. Well, it sounds like a good place to work. I know that uh, we appreciate you being with us, and we'll talk to you again, David Reed. All right, man. Thank you. All right, take care. What a good Bye. guy, Cannon. You gotta be proud of him. We have a good team, man. <laughs> we have a good team. David, <laughs> David is uh, he's worked for some of the mega dealers, so he's got a good perspective on what we want. He likes that we kind of move a little bit slower, pay a little bit more attention um, to our customers, and and you know we try to make it fun for them too. And I, I think they like getting up and coming to work. That's the biggest thing that my mentor taught me. He's like, dude, if you make it fun, then it translates right through to the customer. Well, so I, I think that uh, you, you can hear that, that David it sounds like he's happy coming to work over there. So, anyway, more better than uh, going to work at the Goliath of the RV industry. Anyway, uh, uh, Graphics Girl, do we have any comments, any questions? Do we have uh, – you said Doug asked a question or 
had a comment. Yeah, I'm, I'm shooting you some private messages in there with the <laughs> all the comments that we're getting. We're getting a lot of them. Canon, everybody is loving your team. That and, and they're so knowledgeable, and, and people are learning a lot. I think it's a great idea, Canon. If you don't mind doing this, I think we could do this once a month. I mean, y'all do still keep doing your 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 classes in the uh, the stores. You know, that's great. I, I'm not. A, trying to get uh -huh. anybody to do more work. But I'm telling you, man, people want to hear this all across the country. They're probably never going to buy they, an RV they, from you, but they they'll really love do. you. And, and it's hard, you know, and, and I'm sure you know it's hard when these classes are going on and a lot of people want to go to them. They hear about them on the show. This, They're, they're loving that this is an opportunity for them to get that same education. But, you it's know. It's funny because you, you, your dad just said he, they won't buy from us. But, you know, if the, we're, we're not doing it for them to buy for us. Do I want them to buy from us? So I want all their friends and neighbors. I want everybody to buy from us, of course. But that's not why we're doing it. We're not pitching RVs while we're there. We're doing it for fun and really the bigger picture. Yep. You know, I really feel like over time the boutique dealers are going to start taking back over. I mean, it's, you know, you, you can't buy them cheaper to make a dealer. Mm -hmm. And you can get much better service at a boutique mom and pop that knows you by your first name. So sooner or later i think those those uh the the, the mom and pops are going to start popping up more you're actually already seeing it there's people getting in the rv business that don't have a clue about the rv business and they're selling rv yeah um, but, but 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 people that you you've been able to balance that uh, uh small town the small town feel of customer service and follow through and communication and building relationships with great prices, I mean, and, and knowledgeable people. So you, you know, it's it's you're doing a, a great job. Let's jump out to uh to Jim, Jim Mathis. How are you doing? Fine, there you are. Good. Over in Aggie Land, you are uh, you work back in the back, so you're the guy that gets to see his share of slide outs as well, huh? Yes, sir. So what uh, what kind of questions do you get most often, Jim, regarding slide outs from your customers and and situations you see? Uh, m most of them, because uh, mostly what I do is get the unit ready for the customer. After they purchase it, well, I get it ready for them to pick them up. And most of them have questions about how do I operate it? Is this uh, is, is this something that it should do or shouldn't do? And then how do I maintain it? Uh, so those are the type of questions that I get a lot in showing them, doing the walkthrough, you know, on a new, new purchase. And then some of them as well as a used purchase, you know, and then uh, – other customers ask, is this the best kind, or is, is this one better than that one, you know, what have you. But um, that, that, that's most of the questions I get is how to operate it and how to maintain it. But, you know, isn't it true that, that uh, I mean, if you're going to buy a Grand Design or a, a Rockwood or whatever you're going to buy, you don't have a choice of the mechanism of the slide. That's done at the manufacturer level. That's right. That's okay. right. And uh, most of the slides uh, uh, are, are the design is because of how the coach is made. You know, what's what's the interference underneath that slide? Uh, we see a lot of the Swintec brand uh, from LCI, and those are, you know, like your bed slides, your cabinet slides, the closet slides, that type of thing. Some of them even slide the entire side of the, of the uh, of trailer out. That's that's because of how it's designed. You know, if there's plumbing under there, pipes, wires, whatever might be under the floor, that might be the only type of slide that can be used in that area. Give me a, uh, a slide-out story, if you would, please, about a repair that could have been prevented. The reason I want you to do it, if you can come up with, I hate to put you on the spot, but uh, I know that there are people listening, people watching the, the video. <laughs> that I want sure. to get their attention. I'm sure you've seen something that, that ended up costing a lot of money that didn't that shouldn't have cost them any money if they would have Absolutely. maintained it. So give me a tell me one Absolutely. of Absolutely. Okay. When you talked just just a little bit ago about battery maintenance. Okay, with the Swintec, there's two motors. They're electric twelve volt motors. Okay. And as they were talking about batteries are the heart of the whole thing. So an electric motor like that, especially moving a big slide, a heavy load, it's not going to tolerate low voltage. You know, people want to try to blame the slide when it's actually low voltage on the, on the motors. So they'll bring them out of storage. They're not plugged in. They're just using that battery that's been sitting there in storage for a while. It's down, you know, on voltage, and the slide doesn't want to operate properly. Okay, that's that's what we see a lot. 
then on top of that, what causes a big repair is when they try to get two or three of their friends to help the slide move in or out. I just made a note of that. I was going to ask you about pushing them in and no. help helping them no. out. No. On swing tech slides, you know, the electric motor type slides, it, it drives, the motor drives a gear, and the gear is on an aluminum track. I don't know. I, uh, did you get the pictures I sent you? I like, did. I did. And, we, I, and okay. I, I haven't seen yeah. it, but I think that we've been posting some of the videos yeah. and most, pictures. Most people can identify them. They're a little aluminum track that's on the outside of the slide. There's usually one at the bottom and one at the top. Some have three. Some have some in the middle. Mm-hmm. But they're mostly identified by that little aluminum machine gear track. Right. And so if you have that type, uh, don't help it. <laughs> don't don't push it in. Don't get two or three of your buddies to help push it in. Make sure you have good voltage, and that'll do it. Now, do they get out of time? Yes, they do. But the, mo- the majority of the reason why they get out of time is because people, people partially run them in or partially run them out. And uh, they'll, they'll get one side will go a little bit faster than the other or whatever. To correct that all the way in or all the way out. You know, okay, okay. Because uh, yeah, we had some people at our campground that, that showed up in a, a brand new uh, Class C, and their slide, it you know it worked when they did their walkthrough, but literally the first time, they were, it was their first camping trip. Uh, it was now going, uh, it's like, came in cattywampus. It wasn't coming in the same on both sides. And they were able to fix it themselves without having to go back to the dealer, but it was kind of a pain correct. in the butt. So. Yeah, correct. You can, you can run them all the way in, hold the button, and it'll catch up on that one side that, that's behind the other one. Now, another thing, the key, key factor here is be sure that you're leveled up. If mm. you're not leveled up, the slide may go out just fine, but it may have a real hard time coming back in if you're not on level ground, if you're not leveled up. You know, these new motorhomes, they have the automatic leveling systems. Trailers mm-hmm. have automatic leveling systems. Be sure you're leveled up before you move any of those slides. That's good, good information. Listen, um, I, I think we're going to call it there and um, – one last question. So, so what kind of feedback from the people that are coming to your class there that you do once a month? Are people enjoying it? Like oh, they love it. Yeah, they love it. They love it. They they come prepared with questions, but they love it. They eating it up. You know, people love information on 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 what they bought. Our our deal is uh, at our branch when we do the walkthrough on them, we want you to be comfortable with what you bought and know how you use it. You know how to how to use it feel comfortable with it yeah and when canon has said that that you can come and attend these classes even if you didn't buy an rv from from sure. you guys he means it doesn't he yes yes he does yeah. in fact that's most of what we have is we have people that have a fault from us that do show up in our classes well that's okay all right well uh thank you so much jim we appreciate it and we will uh hopefully talk to you soon all right Okay, thanks a bunch. All right, Cannon, i got to tell you, uh, I know that you've said it many times before, but you really do have some superstars on your hands. we got some good old East Texas draws, too, don't we? Oh, man. A little call. <laughs> I, you know, growing up in Longview, I hear them, and I just, every time I get any of these guys on the phone, I hear all my dad's friends and all my call, high school buddies and my old teachers and coaches. You know, I still – stay in contact with all those people and and uh, or most of them and man the draw over there you just you just sounds georgia it's awesome yeah it does all right well, listen <laughs> I, i'm starting to talk with we, you. we are uh, we're going to wrap this thing up in a minute or so uh, but for any of the skeptics that may be listening or watching who may be thinking that the rv classes that y'all do are really just a, a sneaky way of selling an rv what do you say to those people I mean, look, we do, of course we want to sell them an RV. Like I just said, you know, we're not ashamed to say that, but it's not about that. I mean, really, to be honest with you, I don't think we've sold, man, I can't think of any really that we've sold to people that are coming to the classes. People really want to get educated. So, you know, we haven't one time brought up sales. We're not going to bring up sales. Um, does it bring awareness to who we are and what we do and how we treat our customers? It does. I mean, I'd be a fool not to say that, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's not the reason for the classes, as you well know. I mean, it's, that's not how I wanted to go into this. Um, we just want to get more, you know, get, people get, need to be educated on this stuff because i got to tell you, over the last five years, how far they've come and where they're going and what I'm seeing even now. I mean, you know, we got open house next week, and, I mean, the stuff that I've seen coming offline is just crazier. It's just getting better and better. 
and it's all getting tighter and tighter. So to be educated on this stuff is going to make RVing for you and your family a lot more fun. So I, I think we're just going to uh, keep keep marching down the road with this. We like it. Well, I love it. I, I appreciate you getting some of your guys together to, to uh, share their thoughts. And, uh, and now the next class is going to be kind of cool. It's sort of going to be Ask the RV Tech. So, uh, I mean, I guess they'll field any question about an RV. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do some ask the RV tech uh, anything you kind of want, but we're also and I don't know if you've known this, but we are gonna talk about how to winterize as we're coming into the winter. Mm-hmm. How to winterize your RV? I think that so that is important. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's, it's it's you know we're we're gonna talk about it just because we're getting a lot of people asking us to, not mainly the topic it's going to be ask your tech whatever you want um just kind of like we did tonight but we are going to talk about winterization too just because the last couple of days we've had a lot of people asking and so my gms uh threw it out to me that they want to talk about that too well that's good i'm, I'm glad to hear it so it's going to be ask the rv tech and then uh, winterizing and and as we get closer to that it's always the second wednesday of every month everybody uh, if you want to actually go to an rv station location seven soon to be eight you want to talk about that yet or no uh yeah we can talk about it all right well, we are uh we have bought a nice piece of land in central beautiful waco texas right along i-35 and there's gonna <laughs> i mean you guys are gonna be covered up i don't know how you do everything with a uh, not you're gonna have eight stores you got those five beautiful kids and your beautiful wife to help take care of things while you're gone Brother, I don't know how you do it all, Cannon, but I appreciate what you do. I appreciate you. It's it's all the wife. Yeah. And to be honest with you, it's all my team. You just heard how I do it. I mean, those three dudes are awesome. And, and to be honest with you, between our 100 and around 125 employees, they're all like those three guys. I mean, they love coming to work. They like servicing people. You know, most of them, like we've talked about, are campers themselves. So when you get up in the morning and you and you get to go to work and do something – you know, or sell something or work on something that you love, it makes it a whole lot easier. And we love our customers, man. Yeah. We yeah. love our customers. When, when I read things online about people, you know, saying all RV dealers are this way, they're all a bunch of crooks, they're all this and that, it's just not true. And there's a lot of really good people out there. And it's it, what we're trying to do is, is steer people in the right direction. And there are, are many other good RV dealers in the state of Texas, but there's only one RV station. So anyway, thank you for everything. And um, I'll talk to you real soon. All right. Appreciate you guys. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. You take care. All right. You know what? It's not quite like the uh, RV classes are like when you're there in person, but hopefully y'all learned a few things that you can do to keep your slides working and keep your RV out of the shop before we shut her down. I would like to hear, I want to hear, if you'd like to hear more of these kind of RV classes, if you would, maybe we can talk Cannon's team into doing some more of this kind of thing. Rather than making a post here on the live stream, if you would, please call our 24-hour voicemail and leave us a message. Uh, That would be great, much better than just a post. Let us know what you think of having classes like this online and even what topics that you might want to learn about, that you might want to hear us talking about. We'll see what we can do. The number, as always, is 1-330-WINGMAN, 1-330-WINGMAN. Nobody's going to answer again. It's a voicemail only. You can call 24-7. Uh, let us know what you think of online RV classes and what subjects that you would like to be covered. 1-330-WINGMAN. Until next time, I'm Alan Warren. Thank you so much for being with us. Be safe, have fun, play nice, and don't leave your good manners at home. So long, everybody. 